people connecting is um, not just a, a simple one or two words. In, in my experience, we've managed to do it in a way that um, builds a, an honest and a sincere politics. We've managed to do it in a way that has combated hundreds of millions of dollars in negative advertising. And we've done it in a way that has, in a, even a small way, um, continued America's journey towards a more perfect union. So I take these things very seriously. By way of just a tiny bit of uh, biography, um, in 1989, I um, interned for Senator John Kerry and actually started to work on something very basic, which was casework for veterans, men and women who had served in the armed services and helping them with housing and education and getting their uh, families through college on the GI Bill and things like that. I also worked on a, uh, the 20th anniversary of Earth Day in 1990, and the casework became policy work, and uh, the work I did on Earth Day, um, which was 250,000 people in Boston celebrating environmental protection, set me on the road of events, and events for me like this our congregations. One of the interesting things is that we started with very little, and I'm gonna give you a couple examples. Two presidential elections involving a total of 600 million people and $4 billion. Being discounted and being marginalized and being underestimated is actually something that's quite empowering. And when I Googled the campaign uh, when I was thinking about joining and they were asking me to join, I loved the idea that the three words that came up were improbable and unlikely and long shot. And if this were a college audience, I would spend a lot more time telling people that they shouldn't ever let anyone, be it the chattering class or anyone really, define what is probable and what is likely. Um, because clearly in this situation, the consensus was 100% wrong. American presidential politics sink or swim in the two early states of Iowa and New Hampshire. They're intensely local and uh, kind of organic uh, exercises. The joke in both states is one person says to another, who are you going to vote? And they say, I don't know, I've only met them all three times. So there's a sense of ownership over the process and people expect to see these folks quite frequently. So if you went to Max Apples on a Tuesday at 10.30, not only could you buy your apples and pumpkins, but you could spend an hour and a half with Barack Obama talking about any number of issues and your hopes and aspirations for the future of America. We would spend long days and go buy something as simple as this, something that is so organic in its honesty that it would just give us the energy to get up the next day. One of the things that we did, and I'm going to talk about our main online tool, we looked at each individual, not only just a supporter, but as an organizer, which is a much different way of looking at uh, people. Not just a single persuasion exercise, but someone that we could actually give the tools to and let them come in and be the campaign. And the main way we did that was through mybarackobama.com. But here on the right was the first time ever where we were inviting people to come in and giving them the tools to personalize the campaign and connect the people already in their lives with the Obama campaign. And the way it worked is just like when you sign up for a free email address and you could start to organize the people that you already had in your lives. We created much more of a two-way street with our supporters. So that's one way of uh, connecting with people. Another thing that we did is through what's called earned and free media, which is putting on events that get new, news in uh, the television and on newspapers that reflect what they, what they would have cost had you done them as an ad buy. So once a quarter in those early states, this is New Hampshire, we would do what we call television ready events. And here you can kind of just see the very embryonic first steps of the larger Obama rally brand. And we also had to connect with people outside of the early states, drain the oxygen out of that narrative that we were improbable, that we were unlikely, and that we were long shots. So this is Florida. This is Minnesota. Three and four and five thousand people getting the free media, signing people up on mybarackobama.com, looking at them as potential organizers and not just supporters. Now, another tool that we used is Surrogates and validators, people other than the candidate. Mrs. Obama was tremendously effective, especially when you look at how so many of swing voters in the United States of America are women. Senator Biden was extremely helpful. One of the things I love saying when I go around the world, because I'm really proud of this, is that the most powerful political force in American presidential politics is a homeowning mother of two. That is where everything is decided. And so when you look at reaching out to that demographic with someone that has a relationship there that connect, is already connected with those people. Oprah was a perfect 
way to connect with those people by way of a validator or a surrogate. It's no secret that we were weak with older white voters, and so no surrogate was better than President Kennedy's younger brother, Senator Kennedy, from my home state of Massachusetts. So those are kind of traditional outreach techniques in a way. Because we started with nothing and because we started with so little, we were either forced to be very creative or we were allowed to be creative. You can think about that two different ways. But no one had ever done this before and because we needed to connect with young people. We started to buy ad space on video games. Now, you can think of we did that because we were creative or you can think that we did that because we started with so little. I think the answer is actually somewhere in between. Hockey games. Now, towards the end of the first campaign, this is taking earned and free media and pushing it into light speed. This is 100,000 people in St. Louis. We're, we're ringing that event with seven or 8,000 volunteers, getting all the, the contact information we can from these folks, looking at building a relationship with them rather than just a single persuasion exercise. And then on the earned and free media side, you know, there was about 30 or 40 camera crews there um, in St. Louis, so that's a couple million viewers. And then the fact that we created such a compelling and sexy and energetic image, this went all around the world. So this, in one way or another, touched about a half billion people in the 48 hours after we did this event. And that is back on that idea of free media. And, and we won. The second campaign, I believe that campaigns are the courtship, uh, but governing is the marriage. All of a sudden, it's not just aspirations and well, what are we going to do as a team in the future and you know, build a house and have a family and all that other stuff. Now it's time to actually deliver. Now it's time for responsibilities. Now it's time for tangible deliverables to one another. As soon as you start governing, you automatically start disappointing people. As soon as you start to focus on healthcare reform, then the people who want you to work on global climate change are going to say, I thought you were concerned about our thing. And as soon as you focus on early childhood education, the people that are going through the foreclosure crisis in the United States are saying, I thought you were going to focus on the foreclosure crisis. So there's a built-in disappointment factor the day you take office. Now, to focus on the second campaign, we back on these very core original principles of connecting with people and giving them the tools to connect with one another. We decided a year out, our goal was one million conversations. And that's not one million faceless volunteers um, calling an endless list of people. That's one million conversations, people truly connecting. 95,000 conversations we got done in the state of Florida one year before election day. 87,000 in Virginia, 85,000 in Nevada. Back on that idea of individual to individual self-organization. I should also say, um, by virtue of a Supreme Court decision that we knew um, unregulated corporate spending in elections was rendered legal, and we knew we were going to be up against at least $500 million in unregulated corporate spending attacking President Obama. Separate, in, an, in addition to what our opponent um, could legally spend. So if you want to take what $5 million spent um, trying to tarnish your brand um, and multiply that by 100, and then you throw in the legal expenditures of our opponent, you're talking about negative ads to the tune of almost a billion dollars. And we knew that our one card to play uh, was maintaining this foundation of people connecting, one person connecting with another. But one of the main things that changed between 2000 and 2008 and the second campaign is that the world had gone mobile. And for example, we found that people under the age 30 um, didn't even have a, a landline. They weren't tethered to any one address in terms of how you could you know, get mail to them or, or get phone calls to them. So we turned to one of the main portals through which uh, people under the age 30 were um, conducting their online lives. So we created a targeted sharing app. And the idea of this is that if you're an Obama supporter, you would give the campaign the permission to come in and run analytics on your friends. And then we would say, hey, you have 17 friends in Ohio, 13 friends in Florida, and 27 friends in Virginia. And we're going to give you some tools that we think might be effective as you reach out to them. So it was based on that one-to-one -one contact, based on that self-organizing and personalization, but using a tool that had really um, come to the fore between the first campaign and the second. The other thing back on that kind of mobile online life is we had to adapt uh, to texting and SMSs. So we built this quick donate tool. And once a supporter put in their credit card information, we could, you know, say, for example, on the night of a, a debate or some important milestone in the campaign, we could send them a text, and if they just responded with five, that would be a $5 donation. Back on those early low-dollar donors, $10, $10, that kind of thing. And this is what it would look like when you received it. 
we updated mybarackobama.com into what we finally called Dashboard, but you can see here the same thing, a strong focus on creating political activity rather than the 20th century model of just reading about it and absorbing information. This is really tools where people can go out, set up these events, call tool, very simple idea, but instead of just having volunteers call endless lists of people, we would have veterans call veterans, teachers call teachers. Very simple, but back on that idea of personalization and giving people the tools to really personalize their involvement. Our quick donate donors, that SMS tool I just mentioned, generated $115 million, and our internal analytics told us that 75 million of those dollars wouldn't have come to us if we did not have that culturally appropriate tool for the mobile online young people. Our targeted sharing app on Facebook was downloaded by 600,000 people. And, and through that, they reached out to and were able to persuade uh, 5 million people. And that was um, our margin of victory. And then this is the thing that I'm most proud of because it gets back all the way not only to the core principles of the very earliest days of the Obama effort, but it gets back to why I do what I do and my belief in why all these events are like congregations, which is through Dashboard, 358,000 offline events were organized, and that is what allowed us to beat back against $500 million in negative ads, and that's what allowed us to win. Thank you very much.